from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering OCP US Summit 2016. Brought to you by OCP. Now your host, Jeff Frick and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're heading into the the final stretches of day two wall to wall coverage here in San Jose at the Open Compute Project Summit. It's really where all the hardware manufacturers that power the cloud and deliver the infrastructure that powers the cloud and enterprise data centers are coming together. So we're really excited. You know, we we like to talk to the big companies, but it's always fun to talk to startups. That's where a lot of the innovation happens. And in fact, now we're going to get in before the startup actually, I guess you started, but you haven't come out yet, so we're a little bit stealth mode. Mm -hmm. We're excited to be joined by Mark Fleischman, CEO of Deterra. Mark, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, so um, not quite out yet. Sure, you're mm -hmm. kind of drip feeding a little bit of information yes. to the market, get everybody excited. Yes. So what can you tell us about uh, Deterra? What can you not? So you're going, you got some people. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us, um, VC funded I assume, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us who your uh, VCs are? Yep, so um, we, are fun we are a company that we've been uh, uh, funded and founded about two and a half years ago um, by folks uh, like Vinod Koshla and Andy Bechtelsheim, uh, a couple of other investors as well. Uh, we are getting very close to coming out of stealth mode. Product is shipping, we're in production with a number of customers. Hopefully we'll have a, a lot to tell to that end very shortly. Um, and I guess that's why we're sitting here. Okay, so I won't give, I won't nail you to a date, but are we talking about months, quarters? Weeks, weeks. very few weeks. weeks. Okay, very exciting. Um, so, two and a half years, you guys mm -hmm. have been at it for a while. What was the business problem that you were trying to solve? What's the opportunity that, that kind of started this journey? Mm -hmm. uh, the basic business problem is that if you look at uh, infrastructure as it moves forward, you really want to flip it upside down, so to speak. Um, the old enterprise, or the, the traditional enterprise, has uh, been very infrastructure-centric, had uh, obviously a lot of you know, people around, running around with screwdrivers trying to fix hardware that would uh, you know, act up all the time. Uh, Google and uh, Amazon and a couple of other uh, cloud providers have very impressively shown us that that's not the way to build systems. Uh, they literally flip infrastructure, I would say, on its head. Um, they make it DevOps-centric. Uh, they make it, um, you know, some people call it invisible. Um, they just change the operational model and the development model, the usage model of infrastructure, and we take a critical, a critical part out of that, a crucial part, and we do that the same thing for that as well. So, Mark, if maybe we can, you mm -hmm. know, pull the lens back a little sure. bit. Sure. Mm -hmm. Look at your background. You've been involved in a lot of open source activity. That is true. Yes. Uh, uh, and you know. I think about infrastructure yeah. usually is not very open source. You, True. Know, you know, we're at the Open Compute Summit, so right. lots of discussion about networking, mm -hmm. opening that up, talking about storage is mm -hmm. one of the next big challenges. Right. So how do you see that interplay between what's been going on in infrastructure uh, and you know, all of these open source initiatives? Well, I mean, I would actually say the open source uh, content in infrastructure is increasing pretty rapidly. If you look at uh, you know, OpenStack or, or you know, Ceph, uh, or other pieces in the infrastructure stack going forward, um, there's an increasing amount of open source in there. Um, now obviously, uh, open source might be great because the price model is, is very attractive, uh, and the service model typically is pretty attractive. Uh, it has other challenges, I would say, maybe more from a vision perspective, from a predictable roadmap, from an execution perspective. Um, so it's not going to be obviously all open source based. Um, but it's an important factor. And frankly, where we are coming from, yes, we do have an extensive open source background. I can at the very minimum share that we contributed the entire um, SCSI target, which is block storage subsystem to Linux. It's called LIO. Um, you know, that's widely used by now a number of billion dollar companies. I, I would just mention one, for instance, Pure Storage, a couple of other companies as well. Um, we looked at a lot of those companies about two and a half years ago, seeing what they did with it. Um, frankly, taking proprietary um, hardware structures, functionality, and putting it in software, open source software partially, um, on less proprietary hardware, but not really changing the consumption model, okay? And um, that's um, ultimately why we set out uh, to build a Deterra, really fundamentally changing how you consume infrastructure. Interesting, uh, you know, so I worked for one of the big storage companies for okay. quite a few years, right. and when I, you know, joined Wikibon about six years okay. ago, um, you know, I, I, I had to go through some retraining. So, you know, they All hang right. us upside down for a couple yes. months and let some yes. of the Kool-Aid drip out. Um, but, you know, I, I think about, you know, the enterprise mindset. Let's yes. harden it, you yes. know, duly redundant, you know, give it its own proprietary network, you yes. know, build this whole stack, because it needs to be reliable and it needs yes. to work. 
Yes. If you look at kind of the hyperscale, yes. and you say distributed architectures, yes. let the software handle all of that Absolutely. resiliency and can actually get to, you know, you know, more reliable, maybe more secure environments. Yes. As we said, you know, uh, you know, hardware will always will eventually fail. Software will eventually work. Is one of yes. the you know tropes <laughs> yes. that you see yes. out there in the marketplace. Yes. So, you know, what, what, what do you see out there? <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 very true. I mean, I think uh, again, it's inspired by the likes of Google, um, Amazon, Am Microsoft, Azure, and so on. The Super Seven, right? Um, that's clearly the future of infrastructure. Uh, it's it's self-optimizing, self-healing. Um, uh, all the kind of you know autonomic attributes you, you you look you look for there, and what that ultimately means for even the traditional enterprise. Although you're right, they kind of you know are typically a little slower in adopting that. Um, it really changes um, the consumption model, the purchasing model, the economic model. Um, ultimately, um, these these trends are now getting so powerful, and since these guys have shown that you can build um, economically very attractive systems with those technologies that it's clearly the name of the game right now is take, I'll call it hyperscale, by that I mean more an architecture or a philosophy rather than scale itself, and drive it into the enterprise segment by segment. Uh, and, and obviously we're taking one of those and we're doing the same thing. All right, so you know, where do you see is kind of, kind of the white space out there? Because th there's a lot of companies that have mm -hmm. been saying this for a while, I think. You know, I, I, I cover converged infrastructure and the yes. hyper-converged guys, yes. you know, that, that's their message. It's, yes. you know, this new yes. architecture, they put the whole stack, they make it really simple, because yes. uh, I always say, simple IT used to be mm. an oxymoron. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So, um, hyper-converged is a brilliant example how to take those concepts and package them uh, for, I would call the mid-market uh, mid enterprise, and make them extremely easily consumable, okay? The problem with hyperscale is that at a certain level of scale, it is not efficient anymore. Um, because resources are tied to each other and you have stranded capacity if you scale them linearly with each other, okay? So at a certain level in the enterprise, at a certain scale level, uh, you're going to have to disaggregate, so to speak, uh, and start scaling compute and start separately again. However, following very similar principles, hyperscale principles, okay? I would say the gap in the market, for us at least, how we see it, um, is more on the higher end market um, I would generally say the compute orchestration problem is, is very well solved. There's a lot of people uh, who are competing for um, you know, the, uh, that spot, Mesos, uh, Kubernetes going forward, Docker, of course, OpenStack, CloudStack. Um, perhaps the underlying uh, reliable um, infrastructure uh, making easily uh, composable and making it very easily consumable okay, for these or compute orchestration frameworks, that seems to be a little bit a less solved problem. And that's what we are targeting. All right, so it's interesting. You threw out some of those, you know, the containerization, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so some of those more emerging cloud native type environments. Yes. Storage tends to be one of the last kind of problems that are solved Absolutely, along those lines. Yes. I, mean, I think back to the, the VMware days. Yes. I mean, VMware, you know, helped greatly with efficiency, yes. but boy, did it break my storage environment. Yes. So, yes. You know, how does storage kind of, you know, catch up and not be the, you know, anchor in the data center? Yeah. So, uh, clearly, storage needs to be rethought. Um, and I don't want to, you know, uh, share too much quite yet. Um, but uh, uh, first of all, I, I think it needs to unify, you know, existing classic infrastructure. And we still have a lot of virtual machines. We still have a lot of bare metal. We still have a lot of traditional databases. Um, but at the same time, it needs to be uh, to provide a platform to uh, go forward and actually uh, host these cloud native applications as well. Um, and while it is scale out, it still needs to be very high performance, or at least I would say low latency, right? Um, because if you make compromises on its efficiency, ultimately you uh, impact the cost, you impact performance, you impact density. So lots of challenges to be solved there. All right, so I know we can't ask you too much. I know uh, Amber's out there, she'll, uh, she'll get on us <laughs> if we go too deep. So Amber, we, we, we know you're there, thanks for watching. Um, so just we'll, we'll wrap mm, it here. Yes. The real thing's coming out, they're going to mm -hmm. launch to the world, couple of weeks. Where do yes. people go? Where do they watch? Just go to datera.com. Yes. What should they do? Watch our Twitter handle, watch our website, datera.io. Um, it's uh, very stealthy right now, admittedly, but we'll keep everyone posted. As I said, we're getting very, very close. All right, awesome. Well, Mark, thanks for sharing a little bit of insight Thank with us. Thank you very much. We'll keep an eye out and uh, look forward to the announcement in weeks, not months. Absolutely. Thank you, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I'm Jeff Frick with Stu Miniman. Mark Fleischman stopping by, giving us a little inside scoop on what's yet to come, a little glimpse into the future, which we like to do. I'm Jeff Frick, we're coming to the end of day two here, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, Open Compute Project Summit, San Jose, California. Stay, 
close. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.